and welcome to another tutorial with me. My name is Crafty Jojo and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the UK and today I want to show you how I created these little card sets. These are Christmas themed but the ones I'm going to do today are going to be slightly different and they consist of um, five cards measuring five by five and matching envelopes in a box that has a flush fitting and slides into each other. So these are the cards, four by four, matching envelopes and they go into the inside box and that inserts into the lid and it has a flush fitting and that's what you get all right so um, i'm going to show you how to do this and um, first of all i want to tell you what you all need it's quite a bit you need to create your cards or buy um card sets that you can buy these days everywhere measuring eight inches by four and you score it in half so you create your card bases in this case i have created white card bases and you are going to use the envelope punch board um, and create matching envelopes for five by four, four by four cards so um, these are my cards and then you need for your boxes you need two pieces of cardstock and the one that is for the inside so that's the the piece that slides inside measures 11 and a half by five and a quarter and the lid that is the outside part is 11 and a quarter so it's slightly smaller by 4 15 16 of an inch so these are the two pieces of cardstock you need to create your box you then need a belly band which measures two inches by 12 and then you need various designer papers. I'm going to tell you the measurements for the designer papers in the course of making it. And I'm also going to write them down on my blog because it's a lot of measurements and um, I don't want to confuse you. So to start with, we will start scoring. Let me just put this away and quickly fold my cards because they are already pre-scored. So <clears throat> just quickly fold them in half and put them away. So my card set consists of five cards, five white cards with five white envelopes. Here we go. So I'm going to store this away here. And this is my belly band. We don't need that yet. So um, let's start scoring. And because you need to do some tricky scoring with the 16th of an inch dimensions, I'm going to use my... Um, paper trimmer stamping up paper trimmer so you are going to pick first of all you're going to pick the larger piece that's the inside of your box is 11 and a half by five and a quarter and this is the long side and you need to score the long side at one inch so I'm going to use this one inch mark and make sure you use the right blade so you score at one inch and then I'm going to turn it because I'm now going to carry on so you score at one inch at five one quarter which is here oops wait a minute <laughs> my lamp is in the way so five one quarter six one quarter and ten and a half and on the short side you score this is the short side you score at one inch and make sure you take the right blade so this is the first bit of scoring done this is what you get and then you stick to the second piece of cardstock and you start this measures one and a quarter by five fourteen fifteen and you start on the long side and you score at one inch and one sixteenth so that is one inch and one sixteenth that is this tiny little mark here okay one inch and one sixteenth you turn it around and you go to five three eighths one two three that is here five three eighths of an inch six seven sixteen so six two four six seven sixteen is right in here and then ten three quarters And on the short side, this is the short side, you score at 1 1 16th and again 1 1 16th is here. And that's your scoring done. So we can put this away and we need to do some cutting. So you get your scissors out and 
you're going to get rid of this little rectangle here and you can wedge this because this is the flap that will close your box and these ones you need to the right side of your score line you need to cut straight and here you are going to cut to the left side of your score line and you can only wedge the inside flap here like so okay here we go and here again you are cutting to the right side of your score line and you can wedge this here okay this is what you get once you've finished cutting um, the first part and the second part is going to be cut exactly the same so it doesn't matter which um, piece you're taking out so I'm cutting straight here I'm wedging this cutting straight on the right side of my score line and on the left side of my score line and then wedge the inside like so and here cut straight to the right side of your score line then wedge it and wedge it come on Oh, it doesn't want to do it. So this is what you've done. Or what you've got so far. So apparently now we are going to furnish and fold our score lines before we put the box together. There we go. Part one. Part two. We're just going to use wet glue to um, put the box together here. This is the um, outside part and you have to pay attention. Watch very well what I'm doing. So first of all, I'm going to get my wet glue out and I'm going to close the side so that it forms the box. Give it a good rub. Now, as this is, my seam is now here at the back, so I want to make sure that I first of all only glue this part down and leave this part unglued because we still need to put in that little um, bit of ribbon here so that we can pull it and this is going to be put in here and I'm going to do this before I am going to glue this down otherwise I will have it inside so this is not what I want so when you are gluing together the smaller part this is the outside piece of your box make sure you know where your seam is and you are going to add some glue to this and that's it make sure you square it up And then I'm going to press the flaps down for good adhesion. Make sure it's squared up nicely. And this is what you get. And this is exactly how you leave it, please. Okay. And you're going to do exactly the same with this one. That means you're going to put it together with some wet glue or sticky tape, whatever you prefer. And you fold it. And you rub it and your seam is now at the back side this is where my seam is and I haven't scored very well so I have to it should easily fall to either side so all right and here we can do exactly the same but now we can glue everything shut or flat down so first of all you glue this together and then before you press it down you can add glue to the bottom part as well square it up nicely like so 
turn it upside down and do this okay so this is how you get your box together and make sure it's squared up nicely so I'm going to rub it again okay so in this box we can already feed in our cards oops And you see that they have a flush fitting there's enough space to still decorate the cards and this is how it's going to hold your cards so now back to this lovely thing here and we would need to um, get the designer paper glued on first so you need for the decoration of your box and to finish off the lid you need a piece of ribbon any color you like whatever goes with your design what that you have decided the designer paper you've decided to use and you need a strip of DSP for the front of your box as well as for the lid here for the top bit and this little bit here measures 4 1 8 of an inch by 7 8 of an inch and as this is my seam at the back and this is how it's going to fold my paper has got a writing handwriting on it so i must make sure i don't glue it upside down like so that would be looking stupid so this is the back side of my box so i want the writing to point towards me so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to glue this down here now with wet glue there we go glue it down just like it will sit on the box when the box is closed give it a good rub double check sitting good next thing you find the center and as the whole thing measures four and a quarter that is two one eighth and at two one eighth this roughly is the middle I just made a tiny mark and I slide my whole handheld punch in make a little hole there and I actually use a quilling tool if only I can find it here the back side of my quilling tool is just perfect to widen up the hole. You don't need to do this if you have um, a wood. You don't need to do that if you have a bigger hand handle punch to make your hole. So here you go. Next thing to do is you feed your ribbon through the hole. You arrange it nicely to the length you want. I think this is okay like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread this open and glue it down on some double-sided sticky tape so I'm going to get double-sided sticky tape out I'm going to pull a bit off this is too long well actually two short ones will do one to the left one to the right peel it off like so and fold down my ribbon okay this is what you should have got at this point and now you can use your wet glue close your box okay and make sure you square it up nicely and like this you have a very neat because inside the box there is nothing to be seen because the ends of your ribbon sit between the two layers of cardstock which I personally think is a very neat solution and I prefer to do it like this you can of course do it differently but I do it like this okay so give it a good rub to make sure it sits flush 
and then try on and let's pray it fits yay so this is how it slides okay once we have come this far the next thing we need to do is tidy up my workspace because it's already getting minging again because i pull out everything and don't put it back so this is i've already lost the lid of my glue which is here it's just a tiny little rubber thing so okay so the next thing we need to do is we would need to get a circle handheld punch not too small um i actually fancy the one and a half inch handheld punch and i'm going to make i eyeball it sitting roughly centered and i don't push my punch in that like this just half of the half like it's a quarter of the circle that i push in and i do the same on this side trying to line it up so you have got as you can see you have got this and you also need to do this on this one here so doing exactly the same trying to aim for the center like so don't push down too much because otherwise it's just going to be too deep and then line it up by looking from the top onto your i have to so that i can see what i'm doing i have to take it out of your focus but in my into my focus so this is what you have at this point now in order to put the decorative strip on your front of your card you have to determine where is my front so this is the seam so this is the back side of this and this is upside down so this way around sorry for confusing i'm just making sure that my seams on both boxes are pointing to the back side so um here's my seam at the back side and here's my seam at the back side now what i'm doing is to know because i want to put this piece of dsp to the front of my box all right and i want it to line up as good as possible with this so i need to make a mark and this is exactly what i'm going to do so where is the pen that i just put away so it can once the box is pushed down this is my mark so my paper, when I glue it in place, must stay slightly, can you see it, slightly above because my pen has taken some space. So I'm moving it up slightly, a tiny wee bit, and it doesn't interfere with there as well. And then when I glue it in place like this and I put my lid over it, it actually will just show and be flush there, hopefully didn't work on all the ones that I've done so far. Some are a bit dodgy, but uh, what can you do? I was tired. So here we go. Glue. Make sure your design is not upside down. And then carefully. Like so and try the shoe on and see if it fits before your glue sets and that's perfect oh I'm so pretty I'm so happy with my work now look at this so this is what you want to achieve and I can give this the final rub to make sure it sits in place well and I can put my card inside oh no that was my oh dear me that was my um blocks just drop them great so this is what you've got at this point so your cards are inside your box and you have already punched your holes so this was the one and a half inch punch handheld punch but you can use any other size as well so now it's about how to decorate the front and you will need a piece of um, designer paper that fits around the whole of your box like so and uh, like a belly band basically so i am um, um did i do any no i didn't do any score lines for this but um i wanted to meet in the center 
or no maybe i don't want it to meet in the center so i'm just thinking on how to start i think i want to start here mm -hmm. okay so i'm going to just put my dsp the right way around or around my box and i fold it over here like so making the pinch and then make a sharp crease so this is the first part that's how you do it next crease so this is how you do this that is the second part so we are almost halfway around the box all right third one here we go and the last one so i am going to fold this up so it's out of the way and i'm just going to fold this over here and then i'm going to glue my belly band in place and make sure you are aware where your seams are because you are producing another seam so this is the back here's the seam so this is the back side of my box and i am going to glue my belly band around my box oh i made a mistake here because this is upside down so i have to put it right my writing you know is uh, was upside down but it's still the seam is at the back so this is how i'm going to glue it in place and this one actually can come in a tiny wee bit more you need to adjust it just by creasing your paper till you have a really flush fitting and then once you're happy now this is flush and this is how i'm going to glue it in place and i'm also not only glue, going to close my belly band when you put your belly band in make sure that you try to adjust the distance here and there like kind of you want it leveled and i'm also like so i'm going to glue this in like so and i'm also going to um add I'm not only going to close this flap here, I'm also going to use wet glue all around the whole belly band. So look what I mean. So I'm going to add if only I get any glue out from here. So here we go. Oops. Don't want to mess up the last bit. So I adhere it straight away with the help of my bone folder, like so. Sorry I wasn't talking too much, but I was really concentrating on what I was doing. So this is how you glue your belly band in place and when you slide your box together this is what you have at this point. So um, uh, there is another belly band that will be put around your box and that is made from cardstock and you do exactly the same procedure but this one I am going to score at because there's four and a half so two Two and a half, two, three, eight. At two, three, eight, I'm going to make a score line. So that my belly band 
will meet in the middle of my box. So again, crease it. One, two, three, and four. And here we go. This is our belly band made from cardstock. And I want it to line up like so. And you're going to glue this around your box just like I did with. Um, Oh, I forgot to tell you the belly band um, measures tw two inches, two inches by twelve inches, or eleven three quarters, whatever your cardstock is long. As you can see, it's overlapping um, at any size. So, you want to glue glue this in place. And what have I done here? Now this is straight now. And um, after that, you are going to repeat the same process with your DSP. And your DSP is one and a half inch by 12 inch. And you do exactly the same procedure to finish off your belly band. And I'm actually going to do this off camera because it's just boring. As you've seen now how I do it, um, I'm going to save time on this video and just do it like that. So this is what we have got at this point. You have um, your designer paper wrapped around your belly band and you now need to create the cover. And um, this is what I did. I die cut from the stitched framelit, stitch shape framelit die set, the two largest ovals. You can do scalloped ovals, you can do round or squared or whatever you have got, anything that will be um, fitting like this so I made a bigger one and then um, a slightly smaller one that goes inside here and then I used the handheld punch I call this the cloud punch but actually it's a um, label me pretty um, bundle and uh, that's this punch here and but it looks like a cloud so I call this the cloud punch my cloud punch and I used uh, my designer paper to punch out a cloud and this is what um, my final decoration is going to look like and I'm going to use uh, foam pads where are the foam pads that I started using and I'm going to layer these quickly so that goes one here and one there and one there and one there and the same applies here so I am going to pop this on foam pads as well oops I think the paper came off yes it did indeed all right and then I'm going to layer it like so just peel it off one, two, three. Okay, this one I need to aim carefully, try to get it as centered as possible. And then we do the same with the DSP that gets enough support from the large pads I'm using here. They are not the dimensionals from Stampin' Up, but the Stampin' Up ones are too small for this. And now I must pay attention to my DSP so that the writing is the right way up. And I'm going to pop it on here as well. So this is already done. And then I am going to use my wet glue. Add quite a bit to the center. And pop it down. And as it's wet glue, I can still slide it around a bit till I'm happy with its position. So this is the front of my box and now the next thing we need to do is decorate the cards but before I'm going to do that I quickly want to give this a rub 
Okay, so about the cards. I told you before the card base is 8 inches by 4 inches and you score at 4 inches on the long side, folding them in half, creating you 4x4 four four card blanks. And you need some designer paper, which I have um, cut. You need 5 pieces because it's 5 cards and this measures 3 3 quarters squared. So 3 3 quarters squared squared and I'm going to use a retired punch it's called the curvy corner trio punch and I'm going to use this and this to create some pretty corners on my DSP so if I use this part here this is what it cuts and I'm going to just do the opposing sides because that looks pretty in my opinion so this would be um, just to show you this is the one Okay, so I'm going to um, go ahead, just going to do that randomly, and I always do the opposing sides. So this is my second. Looks nice as well. Okay, go back to this corner. This goes on like so and this is going to go back to this so as you can see this is not exactly Christmas Christmassy design it's um, more like summer or spring and so I decided I'm not going to add any Christmas greetings on this I am going to um, do some birthday greetings or whatever just for you and things like that so what's left to do is you need to punch out th this designer paper I'm going to just glue down with wet glue like so on all my card fronts pop it down and then I'm going to I punched out um, a circle in yellow and in white and I'm going to off-center them. I might actually be switching, I'm not sure about that yet. I might, instead of putting the yellow circle on the yellow, I might go for the orange and the yellow and pop this. To, I think this looks nicer. I'm going to decorate it like this and then, for example, on this orange I'm going to um, use the purple and the pink and on this orange I'm going to use the yellow and the white circle which still needs to be stamped and then um, this is clear as can be this is how I'm going to um, do it and then that's my cards finished all I'm going to do is stamp a sentiment and then glue uh, this together and um, layer it onto the card if you like you can uh, create an insert or maybe stamp uh, whatever cute little flowers or whatever you like um, to the inside of your card or a sentiment inside your card and just um, a, a motive like a flower or something on here that's totally up to you how you decorate it but that's how um, I finish off the set and then um, that's your card set done it's um, pretty easy to make the cards are wonderful to decorate uh, with all the beautiful designer papers just uh, mix and match you can also uh, very um, easily and conveniently use up um, scraps whatever you have left over if the colors go together just throw it all in and just create get creative and let me see don't forget to let me see your makes i'm dying to see them so if you haven't joined my facebook group yet i'm inviting you you're welcome to join my facebook group and the link to my facebook group is in the de in the description box of this video so if you want to scroll down you find all the links to my blog as well to my etsy store um, to my uh, Stampin' Up! store, uh, shop, like whatever you want to buy, you can find it there and um, feel free to drop me a line and give me some feedback about um, this tutorial and what you think. I hope you liked it and enjoying it and happy crafting and yeah, thanks for watching me and um, see you next time. Bye!